guys and welcome to Faith Works Designs. I'm Faith and today I told you guys I had making clothes and costumes on my list of things to do. Well, today we're going to get that started. I found a pattern because I love, love, love my American Duchess cape that I made. I'll try and insert a picture somewhere. I love it so much. But I wanted something because we're, we're it gets kind of cold around here. So I wanted something that completely covered me up and looked a little bit more like the uh, Call of the Midwife's jacket because I'm kind of like obsessed, just smidgen. So um, I went to Hobby Lobby and was looking around and I found this pattern from McCall's. It is uh, number M7477, I believe. So if you go, it, they should have it still um, when this video is posted. Um, and what I'm going to be doing, I decided on jacket E, hopefully you can see that, because it reminds me more, I've got looking at uh, more videos and more of the like still shots of the jacket, because I want the inner crossbody, which this doesn't have, but I'm going to try and draft my own thing and show you guys how I do it. But it had, um, the part could come together and actually button down the front and still have your hands coming out of the two little slits in the side. Or you can unbutton it and just have it as a cape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this together and show you guys how I do it. Um, the very first thing I wanted to let you guys know before I get started, because this is going to be like a fast video this morning. Um, did you know that you can take your patterns when you open them up and you get them from the store, they're all like this. And chances are you have tried to make them lay flat on top of your fabric so that you can cut, number one, cut the pattern out, but number two, try and lay them flat so that you can cut your fabric out. It's really annoying and you don't really get very accurate results with that. So a tip is you can actually iron this. It needs to be on a lower setting. Um, I would go ahead and cut around your pattern and then iron it flat and then cut, I would, you know, do like a seam allowance situation with your pattern. Iron it out and then go ahead and cut the pattern out the way it's supposed to be cut on the edges. Um, and that way you get a, a more accurate way of making sure that your fabric is measuring what it's supposed to measure. I'm going to cut out my patterns and iron them and then you guys can watch me cut them out. So the very first thing you're going to want to do when you get a pattern is look for this piece of paper. It's going to have all your directions on it. This is the very front. It's going to have your pattern with all of the pieces and things labeled. We are doing pattern E and it is on the back. Now what's really helpful is when you're going over a pattern look for this. Um, there's our pattern and it tells us if our fabric is 45 inches wide this or yeah I'm blind as a bat I need some glasses this is how you're going to want to lay your fabric out. And up here tells you that's the right side of the fabric, right side lining, wrong side lining. So you really have to pay attention to what this says to know how to lay your fabric out. This one is going to be the wrong side of the fabric folded in half. Okay? And then you're going to lay pieces 1 and 4, 5 and 11 on that one. And that is for the regular fabric. Now for this one, that is going to be, sorry I'm trying to read and do this at the same time, that is going to be the right side of the fabric is how you're going to lay that down. And then it's also calling for interfacing. So you see those little dots right there? It says interfacing. So if you see the pieces laid out and they have little dots on them, that's for interfacing. So you just got to pay attention to that. My fabric is 60 inches wide. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to lay it out like this with the wrong side of the fabric um, folded in on itself. Um, I'm debating on doing what the pattern says or just doing what I want to do. Because my fabric doesn't really have a right side and a wrong side. My fabric is the same on both sides. So we shall see if I decide to listen to fabric patterns or just do my own thing. <laughs> uh, 
All right, another thing I want to show you guys is this chart. Now I am doing pattern E and I've got 60 inches of material. I am doing the large size. So this says that I need three yards and a quarter. Sorry, I'm trying to see. It's, it's not very clear on my viewfinder here. That's how you're going to figure out how much fabric you're going to need for our project. You look up here to see what size you're going to need. And you look over here and see what pattern you're going to be using. So for my 60 inches, I know I'm going to need three and a quarter. It also tells you how much interfacing you're going to need and then how much lining fabric that you're going to need. So I'm going to need two yards for a lining fabric all together and that's exactly what I've got. Now I know looking from my pattern guide that I'm going to need pieces one through five. I normally don't cut out all of my pattern pieces because I don't really need all of them cut out. So I look and see what numbers I'm going to need and then just cut those patterns. So what I've done is I've just kind of rough cut all of my pieces. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to iron all this out on a lower heat setting. Um, I think mine is kind of like in between wool and silk. And then you're just going to go over it and make sure that all of those little wrinkles are out. And I actually got this tip from Angela Clayton. She's on YouTube. She's very young and all self-taught. And just amazing and when I found this out I was like that makes everything so much easier when all of your patterns are just completely flat and you can get a better um, outcome with your stuff if your pattern is nice and flat. So I'm going to iron all of these and then I'm going to take them back to my cutting table and I'm going to cut out my actual size. to do is to make sure, especially before you even get started, that you've got a fabric scissors and you've got paper scissors. Because paper wear out scissors really fast. So if you're wanting to cut all this out with just regular scissors, you're going to be in trouble. So I always have a paper scissors and a fabric scissors. And the children are told, do not touch my fabric scissors. <laughs> Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to find my size on here. I'm going to be doing the large size. And then I'm going to cut all the way around and out. So something I wanted to show you guys on this pattern are these little notches right here. There's a couple in different spots on this jacket, like right there across from it. What that's going to do is when you're cutting out your fabric, whatever you give yourself as seam allowance, I haven't read that part of the pattern yet, and I will show you when I find it so that you know where to look for it. But what you're going to do is you're going to make sure that when you've laid all of this out on top of your fabric, that you make these notches going in the opposite direction. So they'll, the triangles will be like mirrored across from each other on your fabric that you're going to be cutting because that is going to help your fabric meet up together when you're going to uh, put all of the different pieces together. And I will show you that step when we get there. Okay, so let's take a second to talk about fabrics. Now, when I'm quilting and I'm using regular cotton, I don't pre-wash my fabric. Um, when I put everything together, I'm using cotton thread, I'm using cotton fabric. If it's going to shrink, it's going to all shrink together. And I just hate pre-washing fabric. So, but when I'm working with something like a knit, this is like cotton lycra, um, I don't know what percentage this is, but it's knit, and to be able to make underwear and stuff like that, which that video is coming soon too, um, I pre-wash this because I'll get two and a half yards, and by the time I'm done washing it, it'll be two and a quarter. So, it does shrink, so make sure that you're looking at your fabrics. I pre-washed all of this. 
what I would do for that jacket, if I had the budget, like the miracle budget, I would have gotten a wool. It would have been really nice and warm for this winter, but I did not have the budget. So I got a blend, like a wool-ish blend. That's what I like to call it. It's, it's an ish blend. Um, I got four yards of this. I wanted to make sure that I had plenty because I hadn't had the pattern picked out yet. And then I've got my lining fabric. It's kind of like a rayon -y ish fabric. It's going to be warm. That's what I was kind of going for because it does get really cold here. Um, and I got two and a half yards of that. According to my pattern, I'm going to have some fabric left over. So. so I've got my pattern all laid out. And what I wanted to show you guys is one of the pieces says, there we go, center back on fold. So this is the back of the cape and you need to put this fabric, this pattern, on a fold. So I have folded my fabric in half and then I made sure that this is on that fold. I've got all of my pattern weights out and handy. If you do not have pattern weights, and you want to do clothing, you most likely need to get some sort of pattern weight so that you can hold all of your stuff down. And I got my friend to make me the cutest ones, and these are silver, so the light's kind of messing it up. She made me the cutest little pattern weights because I saw them online and I was like, please, please, please make these for me. So I'll link her shop down below, but she made them for me and they're adorable and I use them literally every day. <laughs> For everything that I'm going to do. Now, I put the pattern up next to me and I didn't like the length. I'm going to be adding a few inches in this direction. I don't know if you can see where I'm at. I'm going to be adding a few inches in this direction. Now, there are several ways that you can mark out um, your stuff. Now, the first thing is to get Taylor's chalk. Mine did not come in in time, so I am just going to use this and it will be fine because you're not going to be able to see it. It's going to be on the inside. No big deal. All right, so let's get marking this thing up, and then I'm going to show you your little notches. I'm going to do those real quick, and then I'll show you those. So basically that's what you want to do. Now I'm going to take Taylor's chalk and do this line, but for the outside cut line that's what I'm going to do. And you're going to want to cut these notches going in this direction. My little triangles are so sad. But <laughs> you make these little notches so that when you're putting all of your pieces together, you make sure that they line up really well. Okay, so on all of my pieces, what I did was um, I had added six inches and because I added six inches onto the end to make it longer I ended up being short on my red fabric. So what I'm doing is I am now taking six inches and I'm going around the edges of the bottom of the lining and adding six inches of the gray. Now it's hard to visualize how it's going to look but basically on the inside of the jacket all around the bottom um, it's going to have just this gray going all the way across it. Now if you're just following the pattern the way it's supposed to be you'll be fine just make sure that you follow how much fabric it tells you to have. Okay so I have gotten all of my lining pieces all done and this is the very back so it's the biggest one and what I did was I put the gray fabric all the way underneath this thing and then because it was a round shape, it's not like you can cut a strip out and then just sew it on together. I had to cut the roundness out and then measure six inches down. And then I left myself my seam allowance. Now, if you've got enough fabric, you don't have to worry about this. But I'm going to say it looks really, really good. And I cannot wait to see it all put together. Okay, so my biggest tip for doing clothing, especially when everything is the same on each side, is putting the pattern number right here in the seam allowance. <laughs> this fabric being all the same color on both sides made it a little more difficult. So I've got side um, pattern piece one here, 
pattern piece to here and I've made sure that when I'm putting them together that they're making that front neck line. Now, now that we've got all of the red pieces ready, the very first thing they want you to do is put the pocket on. I thought the pocket looked stupid so I'm not putting the pocket on. Um, what I'm doing right now is putting one and two together. Make sure that you've made those little marks and leave a hole open for your pocket or your um, arms to go through when you're sewing. So I've done that and I've done it on my lighting. Then the next thing you're going to do is very simple. Just put three on each side of four and make sure this is going to tell if you are um, got them on the right side or not is that it's going to make that neck if you don't have them on the right side, they're not going to make that whoosh, I make sound effects. And then you put everything together. So let's go. Okay, so I have put pieces one and two together and stitched down the side seam where the shoulder meets the front part. Let me see if I can get it. This is the front part that's sloping up and this is side number two. And then what it tells you to do is it tells you to open up the seam and iron it down. So I've done that. Then I went back and I looked at some more of the Call of the Midwives pictures because it's, it's going to happen. <laughs> so I measured from here to here and it was about eight and a half inches, give or take. Um, finished edge was going to be eight, so I made it eight and a half. And so what I did was I got a strip and I made it eight and a half inches. I didn't even measure this. Uh, I just kind of guesstimated. So that's about two and a half inches, so probably eight and a half by five. And then what I did was fold it in half, and then I just sewed on the two ends so that it would stay flat like this. The next thing that I'm going to do, after looking at pictures a little more closely, was, if I can ever get this coat to open up, you got to find the back side and what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach, open this up and right along that seam I'm going to attach this piece that I've made okay? and I'm going to sew along there for now. I've got to finish the lining and everything but eventually this is going to turn over and then flip over this side of the pocket so that when your arms are in it and hanging out you don't see inside of the jacket. The other, just the regular pattern itself doesn't call for you to do that so you're going to be able to see inside of this jacket, see your clothes, see the lining and all of that. So this is what I'm doing instead. Just I was looking at their pictures and I could tell like you couldn't see the inside of their clothes. So that's what I was going for. I will show you the steps as soon as I get Okay, so what I've done is you can see I'm on the inside of the jacket right now. This seam is turned under. Now, if you're not going to do the adjustments that I'm doing, what they said was to just sew it down from the outside and just sew all of the seam out of your way. If you're going to make the little add-on pocket cover thing, um, I've got it all pinned up from one end to the other. And then what I'm going to do is just kind of sew all the way down. This is kind of more like a, a stay sit, stitch situation just until I get the lining in and then I can sew all of it together. You want to do the same thing on the other side. Make sure that you're sewing your little thing to your back. Uh, it'll be number two. Because the flap is actually going to flap up towards number one, and that way you don't see into the cape. Hi guys! It's the next day. Um, what I did last night was um, the armholes, you remember me trying it on, and the armholes were kind of small, and it really didn't give me a whole lot of mobility or uh, room to move my arms. So what I did was um, from the hole where it was, I went up another four inches. I figured I would give myself plenty of room to be able to move around. I got kids, so when I'm wearing this jacket, I'm going to be moving around. So, um, the hole is about 12 inches now. Make sure that if you do this part, your 
lining and you go back to your lining fabric because it's only going to be eight inches so you're going to have to go back to your lining fabric and pick another four inches out um, this is another reason why it's really great to make a mock-up for several reasons one I forgot that I was going to be adding six inches to my patterns to make it longer I'm glad that I did I love it I love how it's turned out I really like the lining having the gray on the outside it really I think it's gonna look really nice once it's on the inside and you're kind of looking at the lining um, but I didn't have enough fabric because I didn't take that into account so when you make a mock-up you can actually see ahead of time okay I made I made it six inches longer I'm gonna need more fabric once you go through your muslin and all that so that's a, re a really good reason for doing that um, secondly a mock-up's really great to find out if the length that you want is right. Um, the actual coat was at, like above my knees, I think, and I wanted it to be longer. So what I did was I put the pattern piece up to my shoulder, and then I kind of held it at my thigh, and then I measured down how much longer I wanted it to go, and that's how I kind of got the six inches. So I knew that I wanted it to be as long as it is, and I'm glad that I did it because I really like how long it is, and I really like how the inside looks. So a mock-up will really, really help with that, so just keep that in mind. Um, coat, this kind of thing isn't really that big a deal, but it really would have helped me know, okay, you're not going to have enough fabric. <laughs> but it's okay. I like how it turned out with the gray. Um, so then I went last night. Uh, when I got the 12 inches, I went ahead and measured a 12 and a half piece by 5. And what I did was I went ahead and put some uh, interfacing in it. Ironed it all out. I made two of them, one for each side. And then folded them in half, uh, right sides together, and just sewed down the ends, just like I did with the last one. And then I turned it inside out. Now this is roughly about 12 inches, 11 and a half inches, somewhere around there. I haven't measured it yet. Um, and then what I did was I went ahead and put it on the, the number two panel and laid it out and now I'm going to finish sewing that out. If you're not doing what I'm doing, just skip all of this. If you're doing the original pattern, make sure that your lining and your outside fabric, um, eight inches or whatever it comes out to in your pattern, make sure that they match up. So I would measure from the top of the sleeve of the jacket down to where it starts and make sure the same thing happens with your lining so that when you go to put the coat together that you make sure that the holes are, are meeting each other. So now I've got to go back and I didn't finish the lining yesterday because it took so long to put that gray up there. It looks fantastic but it took forever. So I've got to finish the lining and let me see what else. So the pocket, pocket I know it's not a placket. I was looking up directions yesterday on how to do a placket. It's not a placket. I don't know what it's called. So if you know what it's called, let me know in the comment section. I was really, I'd was, really like to know what it's called. Um, once I get it finished, I'll take a picture of it, and then you guys can be like, oh, that's a blah, blah, blah. Help a sister out. All right. Let's get back to work. Hey, guys. All right. So it's been a few days. My husband is getting ready to have surgery. So we've been to like multiple appointments lately trying to get all of that straight. Um, which is another reason why I'm making this coat. I need something to hand sew while I'm waiting him, for him for surgery. He should be fine. I'm just one of them wives. I'm just, I'm worried and I can't help it. So, where do we start? Now, in your pattern, you're going to have uh, pieces one, two, three, four, and five. That's what you need to, able, to be able to make this coat. So, what I did was I was doing some little math in my head, and visually I was trying to think of how it would look to just take out three. If I took out pattern three, it wouldn't be as voluptuous in the back. And I also noticed that in the front, where I had put the little arm holes, it was too up front. Like, you'd have to have your hands here in order to have them out. So with taking out number three, I was actually able to pull my arms back a little bit more. And that way, it, the jacket looks like it's supposed to. It looks right. So what I can show you is, so you've got piece one, piece two. There's the very back. That's piece four, piece two, 
and piece one. That's what you're going to want to do for the lining and for the outside fabric. Now, for the collar, what I did was for my other um, American Duchess jacket, they have a grid on there and you have to follow the grid to be able to figure out how big you want the, co the uh, collar to be. So um, their original pattern was eight across, five up, and then six on the other side. I'm trying to remember my measurements now. It's five and three quarters on this side. And so what you would have to do is you'd have to take your five inches and connect your five and three quarters so that there's a little bit, if you can see it, there's a little bit of a slope. That makes your kind of angled part of the collar. Um, but for this one, I need to count um, and measure some stuff. Because the jacket, uh, when you take out the third panel, it makes the neck of the jacket actually smaller. So what I've done is I've taken my facing part that's going to be where the buttons are, and I've measured that, and that is going to be about three inches. So start at panel one, find three inches. I should do this where you can see too. Find three inches, put your finger there, and then take your tape measure and start at that three inches and measure around that neck. So I know that when I'm trying to make my collar, let's see, we'll take away one, two, three, it needs to be 17 and a half inches for the collar. So I've got three inches I'm saving on one side, and three inches I'm saving on the other side. So in the middle, roughly, I'm gonna re-measure it to make sure that I know what I'm doing. Uh, there's 17 and a half inches in between the neck part that you can actually attach a collar to. So when I get that all measured out, I'll show you guys what I did. All right, so to get my 17 and a half inches, what I did was I got a piece of paper um, and I measured out eight yeah, eight and three quarters. There we go. Had to refresh my brain. So half of 7.5 is 8.75. So that's eight and three quarters. Then I measured up six inches here and five inches here. And then I made, I connected the five and the five and three quarters. It just gave, gives you a little bit of a slope so that your neck band will look like the other one. Um, and then I laid my fabric in half and cut out two, one for the top and one for the bottom. And then when you lay it out, it'll be this wide. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna stitch along this side, along here, and then along there, and then turn it inside out and you'll have your collar. All right, so I've taken my collar and I've sewn it and then I went back and I turned it inside out and then top stitched all the way down so it'll stay nice and flat on the edges. And then what I've done is just kind of um, pinned it on to the top of the front side of the jacket because I'm going to be doing my lining in a little bit, but not yet. Um, something else I failed to mention that I am literally getting ready to do is that you need to press your seams on both your jacket and your lining. So go through and press out all your seams before you do your collar. So what I did was when I pinned everything down, I went ahead and just kind of opened that seam. I'm going to have to take the collar off now and go ahead and just um, iron everything and press all the seams open. Then when I get done pressing the seams, I'm going to go ahead and um, sew a stitch all the way across just so that the collar um, is attached and it's not going to go anywhere and we are almost done. Yay! Alright, so I've laid everything out so that you can basically see what I've done. The lining is facing up, the jacket facing, the, um, the good side of the jacket is facing down so that right sides are together. You can see my seams over here, so this is the wrong side of the fabric. Now I pulled this back so that you can see the right side of the lining, and then I'm going to flip that over, and then it'll be right sides together. So what you're supposed to do is on the very bottom, you're supposed to leave a gap so that you can turn everything inside out. You're supposed to sew all the way around, around the neck, all that way, and then back this way, and then just leave yourself a spot so that you can turn everything inside out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sew from that corner all the way up, around the neck, 
and back down. Then I'm going to turn uh, turn it inside out, and then I'm going to hang it up just just like my American Duchess jacket is right now. Um, the reason I did that was because if you cut it on a bias and then you go ahead and you sew everything up, um, sometimes the bottom half, depending upon if you did it on the bias or not, is going to kind of warp. It's almost like if you've ever made a circle skirt, um, you have to hang it up and let it do its thing. And it, sometimes it doesn't and sometimes it doesn't. Um, but that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hang mine up. And then what I'm going to do is take the outsides. You can probably see I did it on this one too. You can turn them in on themselves and then just top stitch it closed. What I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to leave that bottom open. Um, I may sew in a little bit. But I'm leaving this open so that I can have something to sew while I'm waiting on my husband. So that way I'll have something to hand sew and something to keep me busy. So my mind will be busy. Then, after you've sewed it all around, you've turned it inside out, you're going to top stitch all the way around. And then um, I'll show you that when we get done. So that'll probably be a few more days from now. Alright guys, so this project was a little longer than I had intended it to be. I wasn't really sure about the jacket since that's not something I really do all the time. So it's going to be a two-part series, uh, so we're going to cut it off here. If you want to grab the pattern uh, 7477 of McCall's, um, you can have that ready to go for when the next video comes out as we finish the jacket. Um, so far it's turning out really great and I think you guys are really going to like it. Um, so if you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up, or if you want to subscribe and hang around and see the rest of the jacket, go ahead and click that subscribe button so that uh, YouTube will let you know when I've next uploaded. If, if you want to leave some comments down in the comment section, if you've got any questions or anything you guys want to talk about, just leave it in the comment section and I'll get to those right away. See you later, guys. Thanks for joining Faith Works Designs.